Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name's Giselle. I'm a personal trainer. And y'all see the title? I'm going to be giving y'all my six month physique update and cutting update. This is going to be my six months, you know, progress pictures, transformation, all that good stuff. Because yeah, six months is a long time of cutting, you guys. You're not supposed to be in a caloric deficit for a very long time because you're not consuming what your body really needs to survive. We all have our designated you know, number of calories and macros. So maintenance is like the happy middle because you're consuming what your body needs to survive, what your body needs for your hormones to function properly and other things to function properly, your metabolism. I mean, just there's like a bunch of factors, you know, but cutting has been something, man. It has been humbling. It has been a challenge. 37? Currently 337. I have not ate. I drank a little bit of water, but I have not ate anything because, you know, that affects the scale and then that also is going to affect my measurements and stuff. Woke up early for y'all. Mm -hmm. Now nah, I'm just kidding. I have to be at the gym at 5 a.m. So that's why I'm up this early. But anyways, let's get into the measurements. Please make sure to like this video if you like it and make sure to subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss out on my videos and turn on that bell button too. That way you get notified every time I post. And I want to show you guys how I look like right now, just like normal without posing or anything like that. This is the same outfit that I wore in the previous um, physique cutting video. So right here, we're looking at these progress pictures and all of them are from August. But in this one, I feel like I look pretty much the same. Right here, I was low-key noticing that my butt looks a little bigger. She looked a little more plump. I was like, oh, okay. And then right here, I feel like you could really see the difference in my waist from the back here versus the three-month picture. And then here's the other side again. I feel like my glutes look pretty good. They feel they look plump, and my you know stomach looks the same. My arm looks pretty much the same. But yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and do my arm. I have seen difference in my arm though. Actually, like my forearm, like it looks smaller, cause when I was bulking, like my arms look thicker. Ooh, okay. It's currently at 11 inches. Hold up. Okay, it went down a little bit more. I have all my measurements here from six months ago, three months ago. And now, so I am 11 inches. It went down 0.5 from the previous video. So for the abdominal, I do measure um, two different areas. So I like to measure the smallest part of my waist. Okay, so it's like 27 to 27. No, I'll just say 27.1. And then I like to go down a little bit more and measure around my belly button. So it says 32, 32 inches. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna measure my hips and glutes area. So I mentioned this last time, but I'll say it again. So for the glutes, you wanna put it around like the middle of your butt. 39 inches, okay. We are going to measure the thigh. So I put the tape measure in the middle, like part of my entire thigh. So it's like right here, 22 inches. All right, these measurements are looking pretty good and crazy. Again, it's just, I highly recommend them. It just blows my mind. I'm very satisfied with my measurements right now, you guys. We gotta take my body fat percentage. So, cause that's gonna really determine if I'm losing fat or if I lost muscle. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out in a little bit. But I do have a scale. With the scale, you guys, I don't like to emphasize it too much. I mean. Well, it depends on the person, you know, but like, you know, me, I feel like it's not really too much of a big deal. There are different factors that go into it. Muscle mass, fat mass, water, bone density, all those things. So the scale doesn't measure just fat, just muscle or whatever, you know, but I feel like a lot of people don't know that. So when they step on the scale, it's like, <gasps> what the hell is even that? But in reality, it's like, hey, there are a lot of factors that go into it, not just fat. But all right, guys, I am going to go ahead and have some breakfast because I do have to get ready to go to the gym. So I'll see y'all in a little bit where I'm going to be showing you my body fat percentage. So later on this morning, I went ahead and got on the scale and it actually went up a little bit. It went up to 134 pounds. And back in August, I was 132 pounds. But to be honest with you guys, I really wasn't tripping about it because later on, I went to the gym and I measured my body fat percentage. When you do this, you want to make sure that 
you well that's the thing it's kind of hard because like i ate breakfast because i did like a quick workout and i had a client so i did have breakfast i did have water and stuff like that but you want to try to not have those things you know and you also want to or at least for women you want to make sure that you're not on your period or closer to your period because not only will the weight on the scale fluctuate but i think the body fat percentage can too a little bit but we basically use this bioelectrical impedance machine and it sends little electrical signals throughout your body and by the way this is not like the most accurate thing ever so it could be three to five percent off but the way you know is like if it's going up or down is if you do it fairly often like let's say once a month if it keeps going up then that's how you know, okay, my body fat percentage is going up. So you can kind of estimate around that number. But my body fat percentage went down, you guys. It went down to 23.9. But the fact that it's going down just shows me like, okay, at least it's going down instead of up. So I'm really happy about that. Hey guys, I'm back. So we're going to go ahead and talk about everything, the weight, the body fat percentage, my progress. And then I also do want to give you guys some cutting tips all right so you guys saw that i weigh 134 pounds so as i mentioned earlier in the video i don't really trip too much about the scale why because there are so many factors that go into this scale it didn't bother me it didn't make me feel sad or any negative emotions i felt good and later on that morning i went to the gym to go measure my body fat percentage and you guys saw it went down to 23.9 so I'm looking at my last cutting video and my body fat percentage three months ago, about three months ago, was 26.1. So you guys saw that it kept going up and I was concerned because I'm trying to lose fat, not gain fat. So there was something wrong there, right? And in my last video, I mentioned that I was going to try lowering the cardio because maybe I was doing too much of it. I just thought I was kind of overexerting myself. So after that video, I decided to increase my macros and my calories a little bit because I was telling one of my friends that I did feel less energized. Now, obviously, because like I'm eating less, basically my performance was starting to plateau a little bit. So I did increase my calories a little bit to about like like 300 more calories proteins carbs fats went up everything so that really helped me a lot and even like two weeks later i felt a huge difference and i felt better in the gym and i felt like my compound lifts were starting to move again be more smooth all that good stuff and even after that point i did increase my protein just a little bit more not the fats or carbs because to be honest i still felt like i needed a little bit more just because i train with intensity you guys i actually talked to another trainer recently about it I, you know i was just letting him know everything like what's been going on with the body fat percentage and all that stuff and i was showing him my macros and everything and my calories and he said which actually kind of shocked me to be honest but he said my protein was low and i was like what like where did you get your numbers and i told him like tde calculator like that's where i get my numbers like that's where i always get my numbers whether i'm maintaining bulking i've always got my numbers there and i feel like it's pretty accurate because it asks you for multiple things your age your weight sex height your activity level and you you know you if you know your body fat percentage or you know hopefully it's like accurate like that's even better the more details that you put in the better so something i forgot to mention in this part is that the tdee calculator does give me multiple options of like what macros to choose from so there's like a moderate carb and then there's a lower carb where like the carbs are lower but the protein is super high and then there's another one where it's a high carb diet so the carbs are super high the protein is still pretty high too or actually no i think the protein was lower and then the fats were lower but what i'm trying to say is i chose the moderate carb because like i said i train with intensity so i need enough carbs to perform well during my lifts but i mean he was kind of saying you should have lowered your carbs a little bit and i've made a lot of progress when i was bulking and stuff like that so you know to me it was just I, I don't know like i always use that calculator so it was like it like don't i'm not saying it can't ever be wrong but at the same time it, I, I don't know maybe because i've just been so used to using it like i'm like what like how could it be wrong so yeah you guys i have a feeling that it was definitely the nutrition 
the protein aspect because when I did increase my calories and my macros, I did start to see my body fat percentage go down. The body fat percentage is another reason why I'm not concerned about the weight on the scale. I mean, I'm kind of theorizing here, but I feel that, yes, did it go up two pounds? Sure, but my body fat percentage did go down though. So if my body fat percentage is going back down, then that means that I'm building muscle. I'm maintaining muscle. I think those two pounds are possibly muscle. Now, some of you guys might be like, well, Giselle, shouldn't the weight go down if your body fat percentage is going down because like you're losing fat? Yes, but I mean, again, I just increased my protein intake like about three months ago. I feel like it does take some time for the scale to like actually start dropping like significantly. And not that I wanted it to drop sig significantly in the first place. Again, I just wanted to lower my body fat percentage like by 2%. So in June, my body fat percentage was at 23.6. And now here in December, it's at 23.9. So it is up 0.3%. But honestly, you guys, after this whole thing of my body fat percentage going up, I am just so glad that I was able to get it back down. And now that I know that I wasn't eating enough, that means that I think my body fat percentage is going to go a little bit more down because I'm going to be eating more. Now, what am I going to do next? I am going to go into a maintenance. By the way, let me show you guys the progress pictures. I'm going to put them somewhere right here in the screen. I'll put like two right here and then another one here. But I am so happy with my progress. Do y'all see my back though? Do y'all see that linebacker back? <laughs> like, yes! I am so happy with my progress. I don't want to make it seem like I'm not happy. I am so happy with my progress. I put in so much hard work and effort into this. You know, even if I did make a mistake with my macros and my calories, overall, I'm still really proud of myself for the hard work that I put in. And hey, I'm being... 100% real with you guys because I want you guys to understand that sometimes these things happen and honestly I'm not even gonna lie I was stressing myself out a little bit and I was beating myself up but you know I came to realize that I just can't do that that doesn't lead me to my goal that doesn't go anywhere except it just causes like self-sabotage you just gotta love every part of the journey the good the bad the ugly the mistakes, learn from it. The more you learn, the more you grow. Knowledge is power. So again, I'm, I'm trying to not beat myself up. I'm happy with the progress that I made and I'm excited to see what this maintenance brings to me because now I am going to be really eating more healthy food, but I am going to be eating more. And trust me, after six months of cutting, like, you want to go into a maintenance. But alright guys, let's go ahead and get into more of like the cutting tips that I have for you. <clears throat> Number one, I have here my phone. Now, I did post like my progress transformation reel and everything. And I did include this in the caption, but just going to say it one more time, okay? Take the cut slow. Don't drop calories and macros so fast. This will mess up your metabolism. That does slow down your metabolism when you do things drastically. Quick results is going to lead to a quick... What? Quick. Quick crash. <laughs> okay. Quick results will lead to a quick crash. So yeah, you think that dropping calories is going to give you quick results. But again, that's going to lead to a quick crash crash be careful with that take it slow i know it's cliche people get tired of hearing others say this but slow and steady really does win the race you guys it really does and the slower you do it the better and it's going to be more sustainable that way i can guarantee you if you drop calories too fast drop macros too fast guess what that's going to lead to binging that's going to lead to overeating and all these things why because you're restricting yourself a little too much Second tip that I have is you should try to eat high volume food. So even if it's less calories and macros, a large portion is going to make you feel like you're eating a lot. Therefore, I cannot talk today. Therefore, it's going to make you feel a little more full. Okay, so high volume foods, for example, 
fruits and vegetables. Now with that, I know some people get iffy with certain vegetables because it causes bloating. I'm not a dietitian, you know, talk to your dietitian or you know, whoever. Cauliflower rice is really good because yo, I can eat a three fourths cup of cauliflower rice and guess how many calories in that serving? 70, 70 calories. That's a win. So I'll put a picture right here of the cauliflower rice that I get from Walmart. Really good, highly recommend looking into it. Tip three, try to plan out your meals so that you're not eating like so far apart because you're already cutting, you're already eating less than what you normally need. So, you know, there were times where like, let's say I didn't eat from 12 all the way till six. Like I feel like I was like starving and I don't know, I just feel like it does lead to a little bit of like overeating. Um, not that I would really overeat, but it does make you feel a lot more hungry because you didn't eat for like a full six hours or seven hours, even eight hours, you know, depending on some people and their jobs. Like, yeah, you got to be careful with that because I feel like then you're going to eat that meal and you're still not going to be satisfied. You're going to be like, oh, I want more. I want more, you know, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Ooh, another one that I put on here. Sugar-free condiments help a lot. So a lot of sugar-free condiments like sugar-free ketchup, sugar-free syrup, they have way less calories than the regular syrup, than the regular ketchup. So look into sugar-free condiments. Yes, they might taste a little different, but get used to it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, hey, you know, it's sugar-free. So that way you're not consuming too much sugar. Don't knock it till you try it. You might like it. I love sugar-free ketchup. Ooh, another one. You have to be okay with losing fat everywhere. Everywhere, okay? And the reason I wanna say that is because my girlies, okay? Now this can apply to anyone, but I'm just, you know, most women, right? Especially right now, are all about the glutes. The gluteus maximus, right? The gluteus medius, the gluteus minimus. And I get it, you know, I get it. You know, I am too. However, <laughs> you do have to be okay with losing fat everywhere because I wouldn't want you to go through a cut and be like, oh my gosh, like I didn't know I was gonna lose this much fat or, you know, my butt looks smaller. Like, yeah, your butt looks smaller, but if you build muscle, it's gonna get bigger. And if you have muscle, well, everyone has muscle, but you know. The next tip I have is to be content with losing a little bit of strength. Because yes, I know that I just told you guys that my nutrition was not totally the best. Even if your nutrition is pretty good and you're actually eating the proper calories you need and the macros, you can definitely still lose a little bit of strength. Not a lot, or at least you shouldn't. You shouldn't lose that much strength. Just like a little bit during some lips, and that's okay. If you're in a cut, just lower the weight for a little bit on the ones that you are struggling with. And trust me, you're going to work your way back up, especially if your nutrition is right. Like, for example, I used to hip thrust three plates when I was bulking. Three 45s on each side when I was bulking. But I did lower it when I was in a cut because, yeah, I just did not have enough energy for it. And throughout these whole six months, I've been working my way back up there. And honestly, at this point right now, I'm almost back to three plates. So again, don't stress too much about it. Lower the weight. You can always work your weight back up to a certain weight. Of course, you know, you want to get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. I was always getting my sleep, so that wasn't a struggle for me. Drink lots of water, as much water as you can. Hydrate yourself. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone. And um, cardio, you know, do your cardio. Now, I don't want to... Cardio is good. But at the same time, I don't want you to think like, I need to do cardio to lose weight. Cardio is a way for you to get into a deeper deficit. But if you really want to lose serious amount of weight and body fat, it comes down to your nutrition. So I'm not saying don't do cardio. Yeah, you can do it. It is a stepping stone for putting yourself in a deeper deficit. But again, it does come down to your nutrition too. I just want people to enjoy doing cardio because... You know, it's good for your heart. It's good for your cardiovascular system, for your cardiovascular health. I don't want you to only think of cardio as, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight. But I'm just trying to help y'all see it in a more sustainable, positive approach. So those are all the tips that I have for you guys. A lot of those things are certain things that I needed to learn and needed to remind myself about. 
And yeah, again, this cut was a challenge. This cut was humbling in many ways, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. You know, I always love learning and that's what I love about fitness. I'm constantly learning, even though I'm a personal trainer. One, I'm not perfect. Two, I don't know everything about fitness. I know a good amount, but I don't know everything. And that's okay too. I'm gonna keep it 100% with you guys. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know everything when I don't, you know? And I just love that I am always able to learn and I can always pass on this knowledge to my clients, to you guys, just anyone, you know? That's the point of me learning, sharing it with other people. So I really hope that this video helped you guys out and gave you guys some insight. But all right, guys, we're pretty much all done here. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Turn on those post notifications on your phone that we get notified every time I upload a brand new video. If there are any videos that you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments below. That way I can make them for you. If you guys ever have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below too. Don't be shy. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.